thank you for the opportunity, God, in that our voices will go to the east and the north and to the west and to the south and all over the earth that you want us to be shared. And so that we can inspire other women and men, we can uplift and we can motivate. And the people that are listening to this will can execute, they can take something in their life and they can have a transformative change. God, we honor you and thank you so much today. Miss Carolyn A. Britt, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm reading a little bit about your bio before we get into it. It's so much, but I'm just going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to mention just a bit. Carolyn A. Brent's story can be summed up in five words. Go big or go home. Quote, she has combated numerous physical and emotional hardships in her life with big ideas in actions that have made a profound impact on the lives of thousands of people, overcoming an abuse of childhood at the hands of her mentally ill mother. She rose to become one of the first African American. And as we celebrate Black History Month, this month is so timely, clinical education managers in the pharmaceutical industry, working with thought leaders across the country. I could go on and on and on, but we're going to share a lot more about your bio in your books. Miss Carolyn A. Brent, welcome. Take thank it you. away. Well, first of all, Kim, thank you so much for having me as a guest. And I am so humble to be in your presence of, of your, your beauty industry. You have been in your, this industry you actually own the industry, 24 years. I met you 15 years ago. You still look exactly the way you did. That's why I have to ask you your age because when I met you, I knew that I was at least 20 years older than you. And I, so here it is, I'm going, I said, Kim, how old are you? Because you still look exactly the same. Thank and I you, love that you practice literally what you live, you live it, you practice it, you have your, you've grown too gorgeous beauty. I feel like I'm too gorgeous. I mean, I just love your brand. I love who you are. And I just want to say thank you. And I really admire you. I really do. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. Thank you. Back, back at you. And thank you again so much uh, for your time. Um, Carolyn, being a, a number one best selling author, uh, being a health and wellness guru, and also an elder care advocate, caregiving advocate. Um, let me just ask you before I get into a lot of these books that I want to share with the people, because a lot of people don't know that you've written nine, nine, nine books. Um, real quickly, what has been your most defining moment? My most defining moment is discovering that the only person, the only thing I need in life is God. And, and that defining moment came when I left my husband. I moved to Florida, married for nine months. His girlfriend called me up and told me that, you know, she wanted to see him. His girlfriend, my, I was the wife, but his girlfriend called. So I decided, okay, I got to get off this relationship and once I left, I sat at literally a storage uh, a complex in my car, not knowing a soul here in Florida, not knowing no one except for the man I married. And I sat there, I said, dear God, what do I do? That's what I asked God. And God said, are you ready to follow me? Are you ready? That was my defining moment. And that's when my life changed Kim forever whoa that's when my life changed that's no. when only i've always known god but that moment right that's when i had discovered a relationship with god i said okay dear, dear god it's me and you Amen. where do i go and the holy spirit has been leading me since so that was my defining moment and i was 58 years old when i had my defining moment when I left a cheating husband after only nine months and God said, are you ready to follow me? Can you, you could trust me, Carolyn. And I gave my life to God. I said, dear God, I trust you. Oh and so my God. Then, it, it, God it, 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 he's been wow. waiting. And then. look where you are now. I so let's you. get into these books. What, so Carolyn, nine books, what is, what was your first book you wrote? Let's just share the very, first, the very just really quick the, uh, was why wait. I wrote this book because I was a caregiver for my dad, 
And I didn't know anything about writing, but what happened to me, I had six, uh, seven siblings at the time. Nobody wanted to help me with, uh, with my father because I was single, didn't uh, have children. And they're going, dad, a girl patting me on my back, you take care of dad. And I did. But once my father had a sudden and unexpected life-threatening emergency, of course, the family wanted to take over. I found myself in pro three different probate courts in California with the allegation of elder abuse, wow. all lies. And because I, I was a wreck, I was a mental, physical, emotional wreck. I was mad at God. I said, your God, you know how much I, was, I, I love my father. You know that we were close. Why did you let this happen to me? And God said, you got to write, you got to write, why wait? I'd never wow. read the book before, but God gave me the knowledge to write the baby boomer's guide to preparing emotionally, financially, and legally for a parent's death. And that, this was my first book. That was the first book. And your second book, why the wait? Second, but because the first one did really well. I was self-published, but it, it was number one on Amazon because nobody had ever written about adult sibling rivalry. Wow. I wrote First book on adult sibling rivalry when it came to end of life care and then Harlequin came knocking at my door and then I ended up writing uh, the uh, caregiver's companion and there's three different versions of the caregiver companion this right here is large print but Harlequin they just made the book go viral literally wow. it's in the library of congress it's in all the major universities what uh, 1084 libraries worldwide because this is a subject, Kim, that people, here we are, we're in a pandemic, okay? We're in a pandemic. I've been writing about end of life care for 14 years wow. because people never think yep, that yep, yep. when I come into that. Yep. But guess what, Kim? We're all gonna either be a caregiver or be cared for by someone. That's right, be a and caregiver or be care. caregiver by someone. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you have three versions. You have the financial one and their emotional book. Yeah. That wrote. Matter of fact, Kim, we broke it down. The emotional, the first thing that happens, you know, even when I, this emotional, it can go into any standpoint. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine I moved 2,500 miles away, which California to Florida to be with a cheating man. I would, we didn't even make it nine months. Wow. But emotionally, wow. I got to truly depend on God because I knew I didn't want to go back to California wow. because Florida offered so much to me that, you know, the cost of living, the ocean, the whole bit. And I said, dear God, it's me and you. Where do I go? God sent me all the way down to South Florida, 300 miles away from the person I married. And I feel like I've been here my whole life. Oh, my God. But thank God I had me to write the legal, a legal guide because Amen. The legal guy is coming from attorney. So I, unlike the vehicle, mm -hmm. but it's all legal, vetted by attorneys. And then, of course, the financial guide. So mm -hmm. God got me to write all these books because wow. whatever they need, there's something for whatever a person needs. That is amazing. You uh, have actually been busy. I have. Gee, that's, why, that's why I told you this year. 2021, I feel, thank you, God, I'm not writing this year. Yeah. Do you know how blessed I feel that God has given me this whole year not to write? But I am working on a movie, so that's yet to come. So oh, oh, we know, yeah. and, and wait, and, and don't forget you, your TED Talk. I mean, oh, all yeah. this is a TED Talk. You oh, know, yeah. we were talking about that earlier. It's like, okay, Carolyn, where did you get, where did your TED talk? <laughs> but I have to, I have to say, I have to share my screen so that we could see your latest book. Um, do I still have it on my screen here? Let me see if I have it on here. I have to change it. The Caregiver's Companion. This one here, oh yes, you guys can go on Carolyn's website or you could go to my store. I have an Amazon store, uh, Too Gorgeous. Um, in her book here, The Caregiver's Companion, Caring for the Loved One Medically, Financially, Emotionally by Caring for Yourself. Carolyn, tell us a little bit of this book, about this well, book here. This particular book, it's an updated version of the 2015 book. And uh, everything from COVID to, to all of the the medical, financial things that people need to know that's updated. Then I added two additional chapters, one on meditation, 
one on self-care because caregivers, I love my caregivers. I love them, love them, love them. Yes. They're so busy taking care of their loved ones yes. until they're saying, okay, I don't have time to take care of me. Just like I was talking to a dear friend last night. She says, Carolyn, I haven't gotten any sleep because my dad gets and wanders around. I said, I get it. My father wandered too. And that's why caregivers, caregivers, I'm talking to you directly. You got to try to find a way to get respite. So I talk about different ways and different organizations that can help you to practice self-care. But Kim, this is not only for caregivers, it's for anyone. Because Americans, we are the most overweight, populated, richest country out there. Why is it that we're overweight and we have all these diseases? It's what we put in our mouth. It's what wow. we're running after money, wow. money, 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 money. And I say wow. that if you run after great health, then your health is your wealth. Your health is your wealth. This is an amazing book, Carolyn. My uh, goodness, especially if you're caregiving, caring, caring for those that you love. This yeah. is an amazing book. This is Black History Month. Everyone, please go out and support. This yeah. is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. This is fabulous. Yeah. Here's my website where I have all my luscious, yummy books for you all. I put them all in one space. And so then I must open this one because this one is amazing, Grace. So this is the one that your defining moment that you really, really love. And I was reading here a little bit, Carolyn, if I may, that that this here, when you were, tell us first a little bit about this book that I'm going to say what I thought when I when I found this right here. What, what's, the, what's the beauty of The Amazing Grace? In 2015, when I divorced my husband, I was working on another book project and I was going through some old files and I found a thick file of my father's his ministry, his messages that he was preparing for his congregation. And I started reading, I went, oh my God, what am I doing with this? I never knew I had it. The, the file was 40 years old and the Holy Spirit said, you're gonna write a book about your father's ministries and what, what you know, his legacy, you're gonna write it. So here it was, I, my father wrote letters to me. He wrote letters to other people in my family. And that's what I put together a book, I co-wrote a book with my dad and my dad went uh, information that he wrote over 40 years ago. I think this is awesome, Carolyn. And I love this lo this piece here where you said, dad, this letter was a blueprint that has helped me to free my soul. When I was 57, I was going through a divorce and feeling very alone, but finding this letter gave me hope and it renewed my strength. It reminded me <clears throat> I was not alone. God was with me and I had work to do for God's glory. This heartfelt letter was a reminder of God's amazing grace and the power of forgiveness. I understood my calling, my purpose, and my life mission. I realized why I was born. Yes. Carolyn, that's amazing. Yeah. That's that amazing right there. That's my life was a defining moment. Wow. It, wow. So, so Kim, this is the, the one key takeaway I don't care what a person goes through. I've been through a lot. There's people that's gone through worse things than me. When a person truly depends on God, yeah. there's nothing that you cannot you go can. through that's when right. you give your life to God and ask God to guide you. And I know that this program is not about God, but you know what? I wouldn't have this deep beauty and be on your two gorgeous show if I didn't believe the way I believe. So thank you for allowing me because that's, well, why I gave birth to Amazing That's Grace cool. It's my favorite book. It, to me, it's the only book I've ever written because it's my father's work he poured into me and my father never gave up on me. Ever, you know, ever, ever. That's amazing how you said that your father actually took over and raised you because I was raised by my dad too. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, I love my mom. I have two love moms. I love my mom, but I was raised by my dad. And I believe, you know, as we celebrate and we embrace uh, Black history, we need to also embrace our Black men, our African Black fathers. Uh, I'm a girl dad, you know, that really gives uh, life and, and raise us to be who we are as women. I am who I am today because of my dad, you know, not taking any way, anything away from my mother, 
I could have ended up somewhere else, making yeah. 10 kids or whatever, but it was my dad that really instilled a lot of leadership and, and God, number one, because my, my dad is a God-fearing God. So let's thank our dads just for that, yeah. Carolyn. And, and look how much you're an amazing woman, thanks yeah. to your dad. So his spirit reigns and it lives within. I can feel it here. And yeah. that's great. Yes. I and, love it. Uh, I never knew when my father died I never knew where he was buried until literally last year, because I made a promise to my father's spirit that I would not go to his gravesite until the laws were changed. And the laws never got changed. I've been legislating, trying to get the laws changed for caregivers to support the caregivers, to protect the caregivers, to protect the seniors. But God gave me something greater. Mm -hmm. And last year in October, the Holy Spirit said, Carolyn, you can now discover where your father is buried. I said, well, dear, dear God, I haven't changed the laws yet. He said, oh no, you don't have to because California was low hanging fruit. Oh. I'm the world. Well. You have knowledge that you have animated literally why? So Wait a minute, Carolyn. You just said a key word right there. We fight sometimes. We're barking up the wrong tree. We're trying, yes. to, we're trying to change laws and legislation, but no. The power is in the word. The power is knowledge. Yes. He get, knowledge is power. God says yes. that. Yes. And so here it is, your voice to change, yes. maybe not changing laws, yes. but through education and writing books. And now yes. you're in the Library of Congress and yes. teaching amongst universities. Can yes. you get that? This yes. is like history month. Now that's yes. power. Yes. <laughs> that's yes. power. That's what God gave me. God said, that's on. Power. I had... And the, the key thing, I never gave up. I went to legislation for 14 years straight, wow. traveling across country, wow. going to Sacramento. They all know me. They know me by voice. It's like, here she comes again. But <laughs> one thing about it, I had, you, a God gave me a village. And what the village is, is people like the, 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 uh, uh, publishing companies, my editors, people like yourself, you're part of my village to get the word out, the message out. And I'm grateful, 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 Kim. So the bottom line, I will always talk about low hanging fruit. Remember the five things I talked about? Go bid or stay at home. <laughs> Go bid. You got to believe. You got to believe. Because once I had deci decided I was going to get the laws changed, I didn't know how, but that was my vision. And that was my big at that time. But God had something greater. That's so I get it. And we actually are seeing the fruits of your yes. actions. And it's, and, and it's getting better and better and better. And I can't wait for the TED Talk and I can't wait for the movie. But I also want to just say it's so wonderful to see two leaders, two African-American sisters in our own right, in our own force, just being able to share and to support one another. Although we are saying in same genres that we can support one another's. And I think we should just share this message even more ladies and also African-American and also melanin sisters that we don't have to fight. There's 7 billion people on the, on the planet that we need to support one another. And we can. Yes. Yes. There's nothing like I call it deep beauty. Now people, I, I quantify the deep beauty. That's why I'm at the ocean all the time. Yes. That's the beauty I'm talking about. The beauty that's deep within our soul. Yes. If a person could go deep, that's why you and I are having this conversation because we're going deep. Yes. It has nothing. Hey, you're beautiful. I'm beautiful. But you know what? We're going deep. That okay. <laughs> That's it's like, what, next, next. <laughs> we start and, here, but okay, next. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And we're in the same genre, but we are doing different things yes. that we're able to share. Yes. I cannot do what you do, Kim. Remember I told you, I, did, I could, Kim, I'm, I'm going to have you as the coach that I'm going to say, tell people, have, <laughs> go to camp. Because I can't coach. She you. has executive I, programs. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I love it. Expertise. God did not give me that gift. You do it with a smile, with grace and poise. I would just look at a phone or look at Zoom going, oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so God has given everybody special gifts. That's right. A writer 
or I'm a television, or I could do something like this, yes. or I could do platform, but get me one-on-one, -on -one, I do not have patience. That's why I'm not a school teacher. And it's just so nice to know your gifts. It's so nice to stay on your freeway. I don't, I don't try to do what I know that I'm not. Yeah. You know, I stay in my genre of work and my body of work speaks that message for 24 years, soon to turn 25. And you know, <laughs> and I stay in my lane. So Miss Carolyn, we got to get into your kitchen. Let's get into your mindset. What keeps this woman looking so fabulous at the age of 64? Woo! <laughs> starts in the kitchen and having a mindset yeah. I got tired of being sick and tired of having a bloated gut or being constipated yeah. or this hurting or that hurt I got sick of it and I yeah. said what can I do now some people will pop a pill to get rid of pain <laughs> I'm not going to do that Eat yes cliff bar. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that I'm going to go I pay attention I tell people pay attention because your body is smart your body will tell you, oh, I don't like that. Why does the stomach blow? Because the body saying, oh, I don't like that. Something as simple, Kim, as the seeds of a tomato yeah. can cause so much havoc in a person's digestive system Absolutely. because the body's saying, what do you want me to do with this? So it sits there and the stomach just bloats and people just burp and they, you know, uh, flagellate. You know Carol, I'm so glad that you mentioned that or frying in olive oil, which I tell my clients and friends stop doing because it turns it into a triglyceride. It turns it into a foreign matter in the body that can't breaks it down. And the body is like, what is this? Stop frying in olive oil. You do not fry in olive oil. I mean, just something as simple as that, a tomato seed. It's yeah. knowing that inflammatory foods that's causing us to puff up and to be yeah. conscious with that and take them out of your diet yeah. and also sugar. Yeah. But before we get into a little bit more of your self-care, Carolyn, you got to tell me, girl, you started as a bodybuilder. What was that thing that just bodybuilding? Look at the arms. I mean, you and Michelle Obama, girl, you're 64. <laughs> I mean, it keeps the sexy physique. You can go and put on a swimsuit at your age and look like you're 21. I mean, you know, what, how, how is it that you got motivated in bodybuilding? You know, Kim, a couple of reasons. You know, I'm a writer and I don't, Number believe, one. In, I don't believe in counterfeit. And I knew that God, in order for, and we just live in a world where people are attracted to beauty. Am I right? They they're absolutely are. They, 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 they oh, are. They, regardless they, they of are. all the books I've written, if I weigh, weighed a million pounds and look like whatever, people will go, you know what? I don't care what's in her book. Look at what she looks like. Right. So I had to match. I've always had self-esteem, self-confidence, but I got sick and tired of being sick and tired of the bloating and feeling bad and being tired and just whole bit. So I said, dear God, because God is my leader, uh, God said, Carolyn, change your diet. So guess what I had to do? I had to study. I had to study to find out what kind of body type I have, which Dr. Um, Diablo, uh, Peter Diablo, I love his book called Eat for Your Blood Type. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm a, a O positive and I started changing my diet. And, and, I, and there's like 30 foods I won't even touch because it's poison to the body. I have it in my book, Transforming Your Life Through Self-Care. This is coming from GI doctors, mm -hmm. gastroenterologists, the recommendations, because they're looking at people's guts and colons all the time. And they see that people are plugged up for a reason. And I said this, when God calls me home, God's going to call all of us home. Nobody could say that I was counterfeit or I was, I did not practice what I teach. So because God has placed me in this beautiful field that I'm in, I have to be real with people. So what forced me to go on stage, I had to get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. When you are going on stage and you have 20 judges judging from your hair follicle all the way down to the bottom of your feet, you got to come on stage with your A game. So I told myself, I, the first time I went on stage, I was 57 years old. I got second place and I said, I can't write a book and say, oh, I'm the second place winner. I said, okay, I'm gonna learn from what I didn't do because I was cheating when I was 57. I said, I'm not gonna cheat when I'm 60. Wow. 60 is a, a life-defining moment. That's wow. my birthday present. 
So wow. what I did, I did everything my trainer told me to do. I cleaned out my refrigerator, got wow. rid of all of the foods that I shouldn't eat. And I started feeling better. Wow. Um, I started, I mean, shoulders got back. And I mean, I just started feeling better. And then I start believing, I started to believe that if I ate for my body type, worked out for my the, the, my the size of my body, because I'm a, a mesomorph, and a mesomorph is a person that can really, really get muscles quick, and then there's an endomorph, a person that has a hard to lose weight, and they have a lot of body fat, so they need to do more cardio, and then there's ectomorph, a person that the body, the, the ballerina type is just right. naturally skinny. They can the eat yogis. I call them the yogis. yogis. Okay, the yogis. Yeah, the yogis. The yogis. <laughs> Absolutely. So they're once, all gated and lean. Okay. So once a person knows their body type, right. and, and I said that for a reason, then you can control your weight. You can control everything. And my attitude is this: I don't like feeling sick or yeah. bloated or constipated. Things that women go through. Uh, you know, we go through all that. I refused to go through that. So I decided once again to go on stage and at, for my 60th birthday, I got number one in my category. And I'm telling you, that was the happiest day of my life. And I dedicated my trophy in the name of my father. Yeah. And I'm talking about the father in heaven. Then my daddy came in and then people that I love because it was wow. through the grace of God wow. that I was able to go on stage and smile the whole time, holding my little tummy in and doing my pauses. It was exciting. So now what I do, just because I love the industry, I pass out trophies. I'm a trophy. I pass out trophies mm -hmm. to people that come on stage and they win. And it keeps me involved in the bodybuilding competition because I love it. And I don't compete, but I know the process. You know, I think that's fantastic. You know, you had like a Jesus to a coming to a mind moment that you just said you wanted to be healthy. You don't want to be sick. You didn't want the bloated tummy, right. you know, and you just found an inspiration and a love of bodybuilding and you happen to be damn good at it. Thank and you know, you. you're at the age to where it's like, hey, I'm going to show you the show me state that I can do it at my age, that I can rise to the top. And it's so wonderful because the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And when you can deform it in your mind, you can, your body will follow. Absolutely. But it's beautiful, Carolyn, you have these accolades and you have these accomplishments, right? So it's one thing to get at this point. We know that with yo-yo dieting, that's why I hate it right you go up and you go down you go up and you go down but it has to be that thing it has to be that one thing that keeps you there and we do know that exercising is a lifestyle so now that you know uh how you look from it what keeps you what's the force behind what's the force behind exercise that keep you feeling that you want to continue doing it because so many times women are not motivated. They don't get up. They don't do it. Um, they'll reach a level and it's like they no longer feel like doing it. It got to be something that's deeper in the depths of the deeps to keep it a lifestyle to say, no, no matter what, I'm going to put a coat on and go exercise. It's not about your feelings. I tell people all the time, don't worry, just go ahead and do it. Your feelings will catch up to it. What is your thing that keeps you like, hey, in the game of exercise? It's because it's beyond looking. Because we all know Ray Charles, could the late, great Ray Charles can see how beautiful you look. It mm -hmm. got to be something deeper than that. And I think people miss it. What well, do you think that is? You know what? If a person can do it long enough, your body will crave it. My body craves a good workout. It, cra yeah. I mean, it craves yeah. it. If I don't work out, that's when my bone on bone in my spine, my back hurts and this hurt. I don't want to be in pain. And then also being in the pharmaceutical industry, going to nursing homes, I don't want to be in anybody's bed going, I wish I could have, should have. I'm, that's not going to be me. I so, love what you just said. You said a key word. You said you don't want to be in pain. As a massage therapist of 24 years, a lot of people see me because they don't want to be in pain. I'm like, I love you guys. Thank you for giving me money, but let's be in concert and bed together. So let's help this massage be better and go out and exercise. And if you get exercise, I can get a little deeper when you come in. You said you don't want to be in pain. That's it. If people would realize if you get up and exercise, you won't be in pain. You won't have the joint inflammation. You won't 
won't be breathing hard. You won't be moving slow. You have more libido. You will want to outsex your own husband. You'll be looking young. Your, your lymphatic system, your breathing will be so wonderful. You will not look gray. You will have your color back. You will move when you exercise. You will have more mental ability when you exercise. And people want to be around people who are happy and love being about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, look at all the benefits that exercise give you. I just yeah. gave you some. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I got to tell you, it's between exercise and eating right, the two are, are in bed together. <laughs> you got to do both. And I got to tell you, I just love feeling good. Just like the when you see me at the beach, I will go on a six mile beach walk. That Those are on the days where I call myself meditating. But I'm going on a walk, and that's my cardio, going on a walk, literally walking in sand, which is actually not easy to do. But the bottom line, I have to feed my mind, body, and soul, and I refuse to be counterfeit. When when they see me, this is what they say. You look like your photos. I said, I'm supposed to look like my photos. I love that. So I that's put, the key. I, I put that in my ad with you. I said, and she, this is her photo optic, and this is really how she looks. So, Carolyn, let's talk about real quick about the gym. I love going to my gym. You go to a high end gym. It's just something about when we go to the gym and yeah. you're dress coordinated. It's yeah. something about when you're coordinated, how much that and just it, it lifts the self esteem. So, what do you? What's your take on that? You know what? They go hand in hand. If you put yourself on a nice outfit, doesn't have to be exp- expensive. It, it just like you said, coordinated. There's something about when you look good in your clothes or just put some nice clothes on instead of wearing a big. Some people, I haven't seen them because of where I go, they don't, they dress very, very nice. But I have gone to gems where a person, they have a shower cap on. <laughs> nails out to here you know they're just i don't know what they're in the gym for but you could go to the gym and look beautiful kim i told you i gave all my clothes away and i'm proud of it because because i don't need clothes in florida seriously i think i have 14 outfits to my name and that's it i'm proud of that but i have a whole lot of gym outfits and it motivates me when i go and and the type of clothing that i wear it's form fitting but I'm able to breathe with the it's breathable material and it seems to help me to move better. And I get a good workout in and I feel fabulous when I leave the gym. Well, I tell you, I'd rather have a, a few high end matching gym fits than a coach bag. That's just me. You know, our lifestyle just kind of evolves and everybody has what they like and, you know, they they do but carolyn is so i'm so glad that you mentioned that because just real sideways segue to our melanin sisters and and, you know when i see that and it's like wow rollers in the hair come into the gym not all but just some and it's like i i just wish that we just get it and 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 one thing that can inspire ladies is just to be coordinated. I mean, it just lends so much. You go to yoga, you have your yoga fit on, and when you're done, you put on your sweater, you can go have a nice latte or hot tea, and you went in and exercise, and you can still look sexy when you're done with your yoga. It's just something to be said about that. Yeah. You know, Kim, I gotta tell you, I'm so grateful I live in Florida because the my, dress up for me, and this is the truth, I could put on a pair of jeans, go to the store. They go, Carolyn, you're so dressed up. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, a pair of jeans. Because everybody wears workout clothes here. That's the that's what we wear. Or each outfit. But that's 99.9% of what you see. The only time I'll actually put a dress on is when I'm like doing a Zoom call. And or if I do a show, then I put a dress on. Otherwise, I'm in gym clothes all the time. I and love I love it. it. You know me, and I am too. I'm in yoga pants and I I love it. You know, I think I'm getting ready to have my own two gorgeous yoga gear. That is my goal for 2022 to come out with my yoga gear wear two gorgeous. So stay tuned for that. (laughs) So let's talk about real quickly, um, Carolyn, how do you just establish such a beautiful, strong mindset for self-care? Let's leave the ladies with, you know, some good self-care tips. I think as I always educate my clients that self-care is a lifestyle. 
as we began this segment is that it is the number one breath. Self-care, you have to have self-care. Right. And I think oftentimes uh, women, they just don't give they don't give a lot of energy towards it or they just don't make it number one. Right. So how, um, how at your age, 64, it is number one in your life? How it's do you one. keep it being number one in your life? Well, you know, Ken, being a caregiver advocate and, and literally interviewing thousands and thousands of caregivers over a 14 year period, I asked the question, if, the, if uh, caregivers, what would you do differently in your caregiving experience? And the first thing, it matched to what I believe. I would take care of myself first. That's what they had told me. Yeah. And the bottom line is this, when if a person's a caregiver, especially, they're exposed to sickness and people dying and all kinds of stuff. And I've told myself, because I've been in thousands of nursing homes, I don't want to be in that bed and say, I wish I could have should have. So exactly. while I'm healthy, and I, if, I really highly recommend that anybody I don't even care if you're in a wheelchair. Do something for yourself. I have a friend that's in a wheelchair. He exercises in his wheelchair because he has a wheelchair that moves his body where he can't move or he'll get into the pool. But the bottom line is this, there's nothing like feeling fabulous, yes. nothing like it. When I go to my doctor's offices, they are, because I see multiple doctors because I, I see an orthopedic surgeon because I'm bone on bone on my spine. And I do have, some uh, uh, drugs on hand, if I get into a situation where I can't handle it, because I can't sit too long, you'll see me go like this because I can't sit long. Right. But uh, the key thing is this, I'd rather do it the holistic way mm -hmm. than to go the route of being hooked on an opioid to, mm -hmm. to, to manage my pain. When, as you know, Kim, you have a program on eating and you share with people uh, foods that are anti-inflammatory yes. foods. So great, I, great 90. Mm -hmm. I keep that in my refrigerator. I, I go to the best options for me because I don't like pain. I don't like, I like, Kim, look. Okay, this is this is 64. That's I amazing. Want look, I want to look good in my clothes. That's amazing. I want to. So I can't look You're like out. You will out energize any 20, 30, 40 year old man. <laughs> I love it. Man, will we get to be 50? I'll be double knuckles in July. That's the new 30. Woo! You need to be hot. You, know you need to be when you're walking down the street, yet your divorced husband says, I hate you. When you look 50 and 60 and 70, man, you need to be the best bet. Yes, the best of your life. Why are we not? This is glory years, lady. This is glory years. I just look at We have to honor. Yes. God gave us a body. Honor God it. Give us this. And Honor. Kim, I'm honoring my body, my mind, my soul, because it is a privilege to grow older. Every it day is. when I wake up, I go, dear God, thank you. I'm here and I'm in my right mind. So going back to your question that you asked me, my defining moment, I still go back when I was literally at the, you know, at the garage thing, uh, storage and I asked God, what do you want me to do? That was my defining moment. I made a promise to God that I would follow him. And God tells me what to eat. I, anytime there's something that hurts my body, I get rid of it. And I don't even question it. I just get I rid it. of it. I love it. You're very conscious. And you know that's a part of what I coach my client, clients is being self-aware, being self-aware and just really being present in the moment. And every decision is a decision. Every food action is a decision. And you have to ask yourself, good, better, bus. I always teach my clients, good, better, best. Is it good for you? Is the best thing for you? Or what is a better option? Every right. time, if you are in confusion, good, better, best. You just ask, is this good for me? Is this better for me? What is the best for me? I think I'm going to do that because that's the best for me. But you right. have to be conscious of it. It has to be of your lifestyle. So, right. Carol, I am so excited that, you know, you were very conscious of just saying you don't didn't want to have a big stomach. You know, you, you bone to bone. You didn't want to every day uh, have pain. And so you exercise to 
relieve the pain. You began to eat for your blood type. That's wonderful. Some of us may not know what our blood type is. Next time you go to the doctor and you take a blood test, this is 2021, you need to do your blood types anyway. Ask the doctor what the blood type is. Eat for your blood type. I, I love the fact that you exercise. Your exercise has became, you know, part of your lifestyle. Your mindset is on pull, is on par, you know, and that is one thing that we have to change our mindset and you can never deviate and go behind. You can't, it's like going down the wrong turn. You, you, you just can't do it. You got to stay straight. You can't go to the left. You can't go to the right. You just have to stay here and it gets better and better and better and better and better. So as we end this podcast, you, I just want to just take this just a little bit, Carolyn, what is like some of the food you eat, you just, cause I know people's like, what does that woman eat? But before I do that, because you know, I'm a health coach, you know, I'm a holistic health coach. I can tell you're definitely not a counterfeit. Number one, your hair is beautiful. Look at the eyes. See, when I, when I actually am coaching someone on the health side, I do two tracks, business and health. I can just go like this and scan you. Your eyes are vibrant, very clear. Look at your skin. Your skin is balanced. You don't have no makeup on, just a little bit on your eyes, but your skin is vibrant. Your, 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 your body on your skin, skin is one tone. We look at the skin tone of the body. We look at how it glistens. We look at how it's even. So I could tell you right now that you're plant-based. I could tell right now that you have a lot of green plants that you eat in your diet just by looking at you, just by looking at you and how you're erected and how you sit up. So let me share with you ladies, when we're out as the femininity reigns, right? People are looking at us. These are things that we look at. Look at the hair and we look at the eyes and we look at the teeth and we look at the skin and we look at the posture. But more so we look at your mindset, your energy, and your spirit. Your uh, spirit just incorporates everything about you. It just brings it all together, which is awesome. So yes, Sherry. <laughs> that, that too. Uh, uh, I love this, Kim. I, Kim, if I were in California, uh, I would back you down. I'm serious. But I'm going to try uh, to online. This is I, good. I, I want my, my uh, customer base, my readers they, they're going to know all about you, seriously. Amen. I like Amen. for real people that Amen. that have put the time in. Yes. Put you the know, time I, in. <laughs> and wait a minute, Carolyn, I'm just starting because, you know, you know, by the time I get double nickels, you know, I told you my next thing is to be in the bodybuilding. I, I've had that in my mind. I really want to get into weight training and bodybuilding. So I'm very excited. I got two personal trainers that I'm bringing on. My very first personal trainer and my current personal trainer, I'm going to bring them on. So we're going to talk about health and fitness, too. I can't wait for they to come on. But real share, real quick. We want to know your snacks, Carolyn. Miss Carolyn, share. Share with the viewers. What are some of your healthy snacks? Just share. Yeah, okay. I'm not a snacker, but I do have carrot. Not, not, not like that. Let me let me let me re-ask the questions because I don't snack either. So mm -hmm. I, so let me ask it in a different way. What are some of your more healthier food options that, that are your go-to? When you go to the store, let me ask that question. When you go to the store, what are your leafy greens that you can't live without? Let me ask it that way. I get and this is what I do, but this is me. I do believe in organic because I have such a sensitive system. I get it. I figured out, you know, let me let me just do organic. So I do cucumbers, celery, uh, uh, turnip, uh, mustard grains, spinach. Those are like my go-to. Those are your go-to. Those are my broccoli. I, I do that. All I have okay. that one here. In regards to my meat, I'm not a real meat eater. Okay. I do have organic chicken. Uh, breast and that's I, I do uh, I'm Mediterranean that's what I do I do the Mediterranean I love the Mediterranean diet me. that's my favorite okay. diet actually the Mediterranean diet yeah. that works for me and uh and and basically sweet potatoes I do the sweet potatoes and if I do if I do rice I, I don't do rice that those often. are your root vegetables yeah I just I just don't I'm not a rice eater but if I yeah. do do rice I'll do brown rice Thank and you. I have just learned to turn a piece of dried up chicken into some really, I get really creative with it, but that it doesn't hurt my stomach. So I know it sounds boring. I have that in, in the book called transforming your life through self-care. I have everything that I eat like blueberries. I have a lot of different, you know, things uh, like fruits that I'll incorporate, but I've taken so much out because I've learned I don't need a lot of food yeah. in order to feel really good. Totally. I eat small portions but i've always i've never been a, a, a foodie so i'll eat a small portion i'll get up at six o'clock in the morning i have breakfast every single day if i get up at three o'clock in the morning that means i'm doing something at six mm -hmm. i just have to eat because i eat a little bit 
in intervals, but that works for my body. So I just share with people, pay attention to your body. Right. One size doesn't fit all. Just because of what I eat doesn't mean, Kim, you could eat what I eat. Amen. Or, that, that's that, why I tell people you have to eat. I, that's why I don't do a one for all coaching um, kind of a model for everybody. Everything is yes. custom. And yes. then what are the, what are, what are, what are your top fruits that you can't live without? I love blueberries. Mm -hmm. I also love lemons. Is lemons considered a fruit? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I put lemons in everything. Okay, I love, I love lemons. lemons. I, I, I'll either eat the lemon by itself or I'll make wow. some lemon tea or I do all these concoctions with, you know, with the hot uh, pepper, you know, the uh, 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 cayenne pepper because of speeding up the metabolism. I put, you know, honey in it and all that, it just helps to keep things going. And I have a lot, not a lot, but maybe about 10 different uh, nutritional supplements I take. Oh, I love with dog. I have well, my supplements. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what, what are your key supplements that you use? Because I know people are watching that are over 50. Um, I did a video on my supplements. Uh, it's totally amazing. So just, 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 just give us your top five supplements. I that have make you look as beautiful that you are. Thank you. And don't I, mention the vitamins. Those don't oh, count. Oh. We yeah, want to know the supplements. Yeah, I'll just tell you, I just have a multiple vitamin. I'm not going to put a name to anything. Yeah. I also take a probiotic, mm -hmm. I, a pre and a, pro, a, po, a, a post. It helps to regulate food through my gut. Everything that I do is about the gut because I don't want ever to get clogged. If I'm clogged up, I don't feel right. And you, you cannot catch me with the gut. I just refuse to have the gut. So I, I use supplements is going to help nourish my body i take vitamin d because you know we need d uh, especially this time of the year although the sun shines here i still take d i also take uh, a, a vitamin c and there's one that i just started taking it is for my immune system mm -hmm. and i absolutely love it because COVID is all around us mm -hmm. but i just refuse for COVID to catch me so i basically keep my immune system Ah, because so I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Carolyn, about the immune system, because I share with my clients all the time, you know, one of one of mine that I love is oil of oregano. I love my olive leaf abstract. I love my oil of oregano. Uh, I am a holistic coach. So I do like my adaptogenic herbs. You know, I do if someone is kind of off a little bit balanced, I do put them on some rhodiola or I might put them on some ashwagandha. So, I mean, I have my key supplements that I, the holy basil, I love that too. I have my key supplements. What's your favorite uh, for immune health supplement that you like to take? Wait, which one? For immune health. What's your favorite oh, supplement to support your immune called, health? Oh, Doug, it's, it's called, it, can I run and get it really short? Sure you can. Sure you can. We're going to keep it rolling. I hope well, you guys are enjoying this segment. This is the segment piece that we talk about health and wellness. I knew it was very important. I had a couple of people that was that had mentioned to me, Kim, are you going to ask Carolyn about a couple of supplements to take? Sure. So this is the portion. Elderberry. Which one is it? Yeah, elderberry. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Oh, I, I just did something on elderberry. Actually, it's in my store. Man, okay. Carolyn, we right on. We right on the money, man. We oh, right oh, on the oh, money. Wow, yes. all I mean, over, all over it. That I would rather can invest in my health than anything in the world. Period. Keep the Louis. I mean, I've had all that stuff. It's just stuff. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, at age sixty-four, it's all about my health because every day is bonus for me. My mother died at the age of 63. I had a brother that died at 55, one died at 54, and a sister that died at 49. So I figure I'm living on bonus time. Mm -hmm. And I, every day is a blessing. And I just ask God to guide me with my health, mm -hmm. my prosperity, and I stay away from any negative stinking. <laughs> I love it, say that I'm one allergic. more time. I love I'm totally it. allergic to that. I'm like to that too. I'm allergic to COVID-19 cancer and stinking thinking. Yeah. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I can't get it. I can't get it. I love it, Carolyn. That is wonderful. Leave, leave us with some last tips on how people can really um, 
in this COVID, as we go through our pandemic here, as we complete and get out of this, and I would hope that some of us will consider taking the vaccination, but that's a different topic and I understand. What would you suggest or, or maybe four points that you can leave women on how to up and sustain their self-care as we're moving through COVID-19, as we're moving through the pandemic? And I know we talk about mindset and fear. Any other things that you would want to add? Yes. Women out there, always reach out for help. You go get yourself a professional. Go to someone like Kim. I would go to her in a heartbeat if I lived in California because what she does is not my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. She knows she knows her stuff. Look at her. Y'all, look at her. <laughs> Seriously, ask for help. Yeah. Even when I went through all of my depression but losing my father, I went out and I got help, Kim. I got a psychologist, Dr. Nathan Hare. I lived in his office for three years and it turned into my happy hour going to his <laughs> office. You know, he, he's the reason why I write so, I've written so many books. He got me started with journaling. Yeah. So I will just say women, reach out for help, build your village. Yeah. I, I don't, this who you see, there's so many people helping me to be me. Yeah, because I and, reach and, out and, help. and I'm glad that you mentioned that because it takes a village. It takes a wellness tribe. I have a chiropractic doctor. Oh, I have two oh, yeah. coaches. Oh, I have yeah. a spiritual coach. You know, yeah. I have an executive coach. So it takes a tribe and, and we try to share coaching or mentoring um, in different kinds of levels like that. And women don't want to invest the time or money into it. But look at, oh. Car look at Carolyn. She's 64 yeah. and she invests. In yeah. therapy, she invests yeah. in trainers, yeah. she invests, right. she has a literate a agent. She yeah. invests in all those things. And if yeah. you want this outward package like this, we must invest time and absolutely. money. Yeah, absolutely. And it's worth it. It's worth it. Forget about the nail salon, the hair salon, get yourself a coach, someone like Kim. Kim, I gotta tell you, if I if there's something I need, I'm gonna hire you to coach me. Yeah. If there's something uh, your website, Kim, what is your website? I, I, no, it's my, just good. go to Kim, 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 Kim M. Evans com. That's all you got to do. And Kim, your website is absolutely off the chain. Phenomenal. And I'm not saying it just to say it. I mean it. I mean, I just, I'm really grateful for you. Thank and you, Kim. Like, I really do appreciate it because most people get lost and you didn't get lost. And, no. you know, you went to it and you, it, I mean, it, it's for the people who meant to be found, you know, it's, yeah. it's meant for me. To, it's for people who I mean to serve. Yeah. And if, if I'm meant to serve you, then you'd land on my website and you will navigate towards the area that you would, that you need help in. And it's yeah. very clear. So thank yeah. you very much, Carolyn, for, for mentioning that. Um, I always like to leave with some off questions. Thank you so much for the time of the podcast. So Carolyn, I got to ask you this. I mean, you know, you in the beautiful heart of Florida, what, what other part of the earth you would like to visit? If time and money was not an object, what would be your favorite place that you want to travel to when the borders open up after this whole COVID and pandemic? Where would you like to travel? Yeah, to? You're not going to believe this. I live in paradise. Oh, yeah, you do. I, I know. I'm like, paradise. where else could she go? Every day I pinch myself. I love it. I and love I it. say, thank you, I love God. It. Because what I love ugly it. situation that happened to me when I married the person that I was in love with and left him, if it wasn't for that situation, I wouldn't be here. So, Kim, there's, I'm not, I've traveled, I've done a lot of traveling, and I got to tell you, this is as this is as, as it's good as it comes for me. I for love it. See, that's so. So you know what? It's it's this thing. That it's it's actually this point for our, for yogans. You know, people that really study yoga. It's a place called Nirvana. It's a place called there. And you know, as you. Uh, uh, continue your practice in yoga. We're trying to always reach this place, mind, by, mind, body, soul, and spirit, a place right. called Nirvana. Yeah. And Nirvana is defined as a place called there. And yeah. how do you know? Well, when you reach there. And how do you define it? How do you define what it is to you there? And you've yeah. just defined paradise. So you yeah. have actually are living and have reached your Nirvana. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm just so grateful. I'm so, and I just learned something new from you. So yeah. I've reached my Nirvana. You've reached your Nirvana, N-I-R-V-A-N-A, -N -N -A, Nirvana. Oh, and that's, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful place oh, to be. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what's your favorite food, Carolyn, being the fact that you're already a healthy guru, it's like, I, I guess I kind of have to ask you, what's your off kilter food where you're not eating healthy then? Or you just explain what's your, what, what food gives you, brings you the best joy? There is a place in right here, not too far from where I live. I, it's called a Belay's and they have a, a noodle, a sweet potato noodle, but it looks like it looks like a, you know, I don't know what it, it looks like wax. wax. It's so good. They say that it's addictive and it is. I love that, but it does not like me. So that's my favorite. Whenever I want to go like, okay, Carolyn, you know, you're going to get bloated. You know, you're going to get plugged up. <laughs> that, how often, an issue, and an and how often do you allow yourself uh, a little bit of that. enjoyment? Probably maybe not that often because I don't like feeling bad. That's my problem. See, that I don't so like feeling bad. I like your barometer. I yeah. like that. You have these measures. Yeah. You're so clear. Yeah. You don't like to feel in pain yeah. and you don't like to feel bloated yeah. and you don't give in to that. Yes. And Kim, one thing, I'm bone and bone in my spine. So it's, it could be easy for me to get uh, inflammatory yes. you know, problem. So because my barometer is my spine, right. you'll see me get up and down. Up, I'm just like, a, I'm up and down. No, I understand. So you yeah. monitor and you watch very closely that you do not ingest infl inflammatory yes. foods. Yes. So I get it because yes. any inflammatory foods can be as long as a fingernail. Yeah. So when we look at allergies and things like that, that can trigger and set you off. Yeah. The amount or the portion of the food can be just as long as yeah. your fingernail will set off uh, an inflammatory reaction. Absolutely. So um, that's yeah. just uh, for your FYI information yeah. out there, listeners. So, and lastly, uh, you look good in red, girl. So what's your favorite color that brings you the most joy? Actually, I love white and blue. And the only reason I wore red today because Valentine's is just yes. next week. It is I perfect. It. Yes. I because I am my Valentine. I love me. Yes. I'm wearing red for yes. all the women out there. Oh. If you feel love yourself, put on your red. Take yourself it. to dinner. Make yourself some great food. If you don't have, you know, a significant other, still celebrate. So okay. that's why I wore red. I wore it for... Anybody that's out there, you have a very beautiful red um, uh, flower. Coronation is there. It's really, really beautiful. But yeah, my favorite color is white and uh, baby powder blue. Look at that. Look and look how your your eyes this this sparkle. And I try to share with people. There's a thing called color therapy, just like aroma therapy. Colors give us therapy, and yeah. learn your favorite colors and wear them. Yes. So, Carolyn, it has been a pleasure. Do you have a URL or a website uh, that you would like to leave us a phone number or something? How we could all get in contact with you, whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna leave all your information, but. Anything in no, particular? Actually, nothing in particular. Just Carolyn A. Brett. All my stuff is viral out there. Okay. I'm easy to find, very easy to find. And I want to thank you, Kim, for allowing me to be on Too Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm excited. And I can't wait to share with people I know about you because the world needs you, Kim. I know I need you. And I'm going to start sharing what you do because you are literally a walking encyclopedia of so <laughs> many different subjects. And I love being around smart women. I do too. Smart. I do. I do too. Across the board, all cultures, all races, all colors. I love being around intelligent, trailblazing, uh -huh. just, just beautiful, awesome women. So uh -huh. Carolyn, again, thank you for being on my guest on Inspired conversations with Kim Evans, my new 2021 podcast. And thank you for being a beautiful mentor. Uh, just as 15 years ago that we met, uh, just wanted to just leave a key, nugget, a key nugget that networking is always awesome. Never forget doing that. Always foster your, your networks and people that you know. Um, and time is everything, you know, a divine intervention is everything. So thank you again, Miss Carolyn, for your time. It has been a pleasure. Thank you, Kim. God bless you. All right. Bye for now. And thank you all listeners. And thank you for watching. Bye for now. This is Kim Evans.